As part of the data engineering team, uh, we look at data from quite a few different perspectives. Um, part of it is in engineering the data and transforming the data, getting it from A to B and putting it in the correct format so we can build products out of it. Uh, the second part is looking at the data holistically, uh, telling stories with the data and using the data to do things that we couldn't before. And this is a really fun bit where we are combining different data sources uh, that are traditionally not used together. Uh, we're using new techniques like machine learning and AI so that we achieve more out of the building blocks. Artificial intelligence and the techniques behind artificial intelligence is not new to us. Um, the techniques behind AI has been around for probably 30, 40 years now. Um, now, while the methods have been around, we haven't had enough computational power to actually use them. Uh, and it's only really in the last few years uh, that they have reached a scale that we can actually use them in everyday applications. Um, so the biggest impact that it's had has been in places such as you know, image recognition and video uh, detecting things out of videos uh, and processing human language in a way that we couldn't do before, uh, at a speed that we couldn't do before. So a better way to think about AI is probably what we thought only human could do that machines can now also compete with. And what that has allowed is a new kind of automation. Uh, you know, previously you would look at the way we look at incident data, for example. Um, a lot of that will be coming from video feeds. Uh, a lot of that will be reading reports or Twitter messages. Um, a lot of that will be, you know, things that only a human mind can understand with a lot of that context. But now, with better processing power and um, by being able to combine the different data sets together and being able to look at patterns and look at inferences, uh, we can now deploy many, many robots. We can try to teach robots English in a way that the robot can do the interpretation for us. And what that has achieved is letting us get to higher uh, quality of service, uh, quicker response at a scale that we couldn't build. One of the things that's really exciting us is bridging the gap between different modes of transport. Um, so in, our, in the data and content suite of products, we tra traditionally have been very focused on traffic and vehicle related uh, incidents. And what we're noticing is, you know, us as users, um, we go through many different modes of transport and we are now living in a society that is constantly connected and we always, not only are we generating data, we're also receiving a lot of data um, through, you know, our devices. And so we want to be able to reach the way people move uh, the way people get from A to B, doesn't really matter what mode of transport they're going through. And through not just how they're moving around, but also the environment around them. Uh, you know, we want to be able to look at how people, uh, whether or not people should drive or take public transport. We want to be able to look at how weather affects how people choose uh, which mode of transport to take to work, or whether or not you should indeed work from home today. Um, we want to be able to say that today you should go home a little bit earlier because the weather is going to be worse and you want to walk your dog. Uh, so we want to bring data in and bring this information and our near-time prediction of the future to make people's lives easier.